Hello everybody and welcome back to Steve on Steve Plays Crisis in the Kremlin now. This will be my second series of this game on the channel. Um, the first series didn't go so well. I mean, we managed to win, technically, because we managed to keep the Union alive and everything. And mostly defeat, like, the rest of the world. But um, USA and NATO still survived, so it wasn't like a total crushing victory. And that's hopefully something that I'll be able to achieve uh, in this series. Um, yeah. Alright, um, I think this will be my first webcam video, so yes, I hope um, people don't uh, aren't too terrified of my ugly face. So let's get right into it. Let's go and choose the same settings that we chose last time. We'll play as Grigory Romanov, and hopefully I'll explain things a bit more clearly in this series, because I understand that a lot of people don't have such a great understanding of this game, and this game is quite complicated. It's a political simulator game, and those are often quite complicated. So yes, we'll be playing as Grigory Romanov because he's a neo-Stalinist and that will help us with Stalinist growth and we're going to be playing as Stalinist. So yes, let's pick him. Alright, we're right into it, so uh, let's get through the initial historical events. Alright, mass surprisings is GDR because of food crisis, industrialization and the wish of Soviet administration to unite Germany. Okay, so basically, if we use the army to control, I've explained this in the previous video, but I'm going to go through it again just for clarity. Um, so if we use an army to control protest, basically uh, sets up a government that is uh, more or less pro-us. And no, I mean, it's, it keeps the government as they are, which is pro-us. And it upsets the West a little bit, but not too much. If we run the rebels over with tanks, it like really pisses off the West. And we lose like a bunch of relations with America and with China. And um, with like a bunch of other countries too, like France. And, but but it installs a more close and loyal regime. Uh, support the transfer of power of moderates. Uh, the West doesn't. Uh, the West relations don't deteriorate, and the government for, uh, form changes to something like Western democracy or something, which um, they split off from you far quicker and far easier. So we're going to use the army to control protests because we want to. We don't want to upset the West too much in the early game because they can tank our economy before it's strong. And we're gonna, um, you know, want to keep a loyal government, so we'll do that. Leaders of the protests were arrested and others were dispersed by the army. Casualties are at the minimum. Excellent. Okay, let's do the next uh, history decisions. History, Hungary. So, basically the same thing in Hungary. We'll once again use an army to control protests, because we want the Warsaw Pact, uh, the Eastern Bloc as it's called, to, you know, be firmly within our, you know, sphere. Yep, uh, let's go. I didn't see God. So as far as we know, Gagarin didn't see any signs of God. This is basically when Yuri Gagarin, who was the first man in space, um, you know, came back and he said that he didn't see God. So what do we do? Uh, we can strengthen atheist propaganda as a result of this. We can just say nothing changed. Or we can weaken our religious policy, basically make more religious freedoms. And we will do that because in this game, religion is weird. It's a bit unbalanced, I think, and I think the devs should uh, definitely pay a bit more attention to it and fix it. Um, at least I think it's broken in its current state because um, at this point the only thing you get by strengthening atheist propaganda is you piss off people and they become sad and rather like riot. So like the only thing, uh, the only like logical sol solution is to weaken relig religious policy. Like there's no, there's no way you can, there's nowhere you can take the atheist propaganda thing. So we will weaken religious policy. Yep. I'll go Czechoslovakia, you have the same kind of uprising in Czechoslovakia, we'll use army to restore socialism, that's much the same thing as uh, that, yep. Minimum victims, excellent. Lieberman's reforms, 1965 to 1970. Lieberman reform, reform passed expanding independence of businesses, unions, organizations, wide use of material stimulation. Lieberman evaluated the cost of reform as a cost of a paper, which will be used to publish the order while OGAS project was forgotten. So, um, just a bit of history, um, this was uh, like a reform proposed by this man called Kosygin, who was a very important man in the Central Committee. He was a very, um, he was a very big important politician in uh, the Soviet Union, and basically he thought that the economy was starting to stagnate, and in order to prolong its existence, they should uh, liberalize the economy and give people more freedom and control uh, for a short period of time to test out if it works. Basically, you know, letting people uh, manipulate currency and uh, open stores and actually control uh, um, control stocks and things like that, uh, just a little bit. Still, a, still a heavy government regulation, but he proposed that there should be more freedom of economic, uh, you know, uh, movement and stuff. 
and it was a terrible failure. It was it completely failed, and everybody hated it and forgot about it. Ogas was a project. Um, wasn't it wasn't a project. It was a theory for like a for like a mass mechanized computerized thing that would control the economy. Basically, it would help achieve fully automated communism because the economy would adapt using these computers automatically to demands and uh, stuff like that which would ideally have happened but sadly it didn't so um we will we can either partially support the reform canceling at the right moment basically nothing we don't get we don't gain anything we don't benefit from anything i think we lose a bit of political power we can fully pass lieberman's reform that gives us like a short injection of 50 million which can be good to do some early investing in with i mean but other, it, uh, other than that, it's not useful. Or we can present the idea of automization, which uh, gives us two free tech uh, slots in the automization tree, which we will definitely do because it's awesome. It really, really um, strengthens the economy, so we'll do that. We declined Lieberman's reform. A significant number of resources were used to develop automization, but we won't get the results soon, naturally. All right, let's do the next ones. History, space race, 1975. That's when the Soyuz Apollo mission was. I did a video on that um, recently. Now, when we spend most of our resources for weapons race and political struggle all over the world, during which a large amount of money is used to improve economy and social conditions of other socialistic countries, we have little res That's a typo, that should say resources, it says sea sources, left for the space race. It doesn't make us any good and it won't during the next few centuries. A lot of people don't see a point in it anymore, so maybe we should stop it. So basically, we can uh, make peace with the USA. That great. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That greatly increases. Uh, I'm sorry. That greatly increases opinion with uh, America, which could be interesting if you're playing for like a liberalization playthrough, which we're not. Uh, we can just stop the race, which that's it. We stop the race. We stop spending money on it. We can do peaceful space race continues, which I think we lose something like a hundred million, or uh, the space race gr grows into an armed conflict, which really pisses off the West. There are two trees in the space development doctrine. There's like the satellite one, which ends up with nuclear weapons in space, which is like the more Trotskyist one, and the one you need for like the nuclear war event to happen, um, which I haven't tried yet, but I would like to. Um, whereas the peaceful space race, if you take that, it takes it down the other tree, which is the peaceful space uh, development and that's the one we're gonna go for because we're gonna go we're gonna want to do the moon landing and the mars landing because that really helps us whilst uh, it undermines the west a lot so we'll do peaceful space race continues 1975-1985 an obvious continuation of a big americano soviet space race was expressed in the creation of reusable manned transport spaceships space shuttle in the usa which was regularly used since 1981 and energia buran in the USSR, which was tested unmanned and made possible manned flight to the moon and Mars together with the research equipment. Very cool. Alright, and I think there will be two more. No, three. Islamic Revolution, 1979. Islamic Revolution of 1979 in Iran, during which the Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi was overthrown and power was claimed by the Shia government, led by Khomeini. Constitutional monarchy was replaced with the Islamic Republic, which began repressions against communists. So basically, we can sever relations and support communist rebels. Um, I'm not sure how that affects your relations with the West, because you sever relations with uh, the, Isl the Islam uh, Shia Iran, which the US is against. We can support Islamic socialism and create large left opposition, which does nothing. These two are basically, uh, like, they do nothing. This one either antagonizes... One of these, basically, uh, lowers your opinion of the West, or increases it, rather. Whereas this one, negotiate with Islamists and recognize their government, that basically adds them to our sphere. Um, doesn't add them into Comic-Con or the Warsaw Pact, but it makes them red, it makes them Soviet-aligned, which helps our economy in the beginning. Later we get an event to invade Iran, which we will do. But for now, we will nego negotiate with them and recognize their government. Thanks to our negotiations, most of the communists entered the ruling party, and Khomeini's support of the planned economy only strengthened our position. So as, if we look on the map right now, we will see that Iran is now in fact red. You see, it's pro-Soviet Union. Um, now, once these events finish, I'm going to explain the map in a little more detail for those who would like to know. Um, so, history. Vladimir Vysotsky, who was a great singer, becomes extremely popular among Soviet youth. His songs are completely unacceptable because he criticizes and mocks our party. Even party members begin listening to him, so we need to do something. Now, if we ban his performances, it pisses off the people and it pisses off the West. Which is the same with arrest in prison, and it makes uh, the Soviet republics less loyal. 
Whereas, uh, as far as I know, criticism is helping the party, we let them do his thing and nobody cares too much. We didn't ban a song, so they started to take an example from him. Sure, that's fine. We're, we, we allow people to sing, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, and I think there's two more. Yes, Polish crisis. Retirements in Poland. After Poland gained a massive debt and entered into the economical crisis, government had to raise all prices, which led to protests. Leader of Poland retired, but the new ones still can't deal with the situation. We will use an army once again to control the protests. Now this has lowered our relations with America from DEFCON 4 to DEFCON 3, which will fire the turn after next, I think, when we finish all of the historical events. And I think this is the last one with Samantha Smith. Yeah. This was a really cool thing. For those of you who don't know, um, basically in 1982 there was a girl in America called Samantha Smith, and she was like really uh, concerned about the situation in the Cold War. And so she sent a letter to the Soviet Union, like just genuinely an open letter to the general secretary of the Soviet Union, who at the time was Andropov. And she was just saying that like, well, why must there be like conflict and strife and why can't we all just live in peace and stuff? You can find it on the internet. And Andropov personally led the, read the letter and he was like, this is awesome. And he invited her to the country to visit and to see uh, um, the Soviet system and to see that the Soviet Union was really a, a country of peace and to explain all that. The Soviet Union was only striving for world peace, just like everybody else. So yeah, we received a letter from the USA. It looks like some girl decided not to believe lying imperialist media, which claims that we are getting ready for war and wants to know about our real policies. So if we ignore it, nothing happens. If we invite her as a tourist, that increases relations with the West. Or if we invite and recruit her, that incre decreases relations with the West, but also like undermines them a bit, but not in any like significant long-term way, so we won't do that. We will invite her as a tourist. Answers were sent instantly. Samantha was invited to visit our country and see our peacefulness. After arrival, we sent our scouts in the USA and our relations were improved. She became famous in her country. Pre-game events are over. The game is started. Okay, so as we can see, our relations with America are 40. The DEFCON level is at 3, which is okay for now. So yeah, um, let's have a little look at the map. So basically, there are two map modes. There is the just, like geographic map mode which shows you like the flags of the nations but this one's a bit it's a bit I don't like it because it doesn't tell you much and then there's the influence map which shows you like whose side in terms of socialism and, and Soviet Union or capitalism and America you know those two sides so everybody that's red countries in Africa for example and uh, now Iran they have this red star on this like shining banner that basically means they're Soviet aligned right they're basically leaning towards us, they le lend us some economic advantages, that kind of stuff, but nothing else. They're not like our allies or anything like that. Whereas, if we look at a country like Mongolia, they have this thing, or Cuba. This means that they're in Comic-Con, which is the Soviet Economic Union that they did in response to the Marshall Plan. Um, yeah. And then there's the Warsaw Pact, which all the countries in, what, in Eastern Europe are. They are this. This is the symbol of the Warsaw Pact. It's the military alliance of the Soviet Union. And yeah, that's basically only applies to uh, Europe and China, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, I think that's right. And the same applies for the other side. So if a country is gray, it has the symbol of the United Nations. It means it's not aligned. If a country is blue and has the flag of America, it's, it means it's aligned to the US. It's fairly simple. Um, and if a country, for example, is one of the European countries, it has this symbol, which means it's in NATO, which is the American Economic and Military Alliance. So there's a clear uh, divide, for example, if we zoom in on Europe, there is Norway, which is in NATO, and then there's Ameri and Sweden, which is America-aligned, but not in NATO, but it's still blue. You see, Finland is aligned towards us, but it's not in our economic sphere or anything like that. And throughout the game, you get to support uh, various countries. Like, for example, we're going to want to subsidize a bunch of these nations because uh, countries in South America, some of the countries in Southeast Asia and Africa can have revolutions then flip to either the blue side or the red side. And we want to have as many countries on the red side because that means that America can't exploit them for colonial money because neo-colonialism, of course. So the more countries that are red, basically, the better stronger we are because the weaker America is and the weaker America is the sooner they'll fall and this series will definitely be wanting to make America fall 
Um, let's see, yes, that's good. That's basically it about the map. A lot of the countries have special unique events, like for example the war in Afghanistan, and India, for example. And uh, China is very unique. China is one of like the major mechanics in the game. You see, there's relations with American relations with China. It's one of the major mechanics in the game. Um, this page basically shows you your stats about your country. Very useful. The one we're going to basically focus on is this one. This is because it shows us our military power and it shows America's power in terms of army power, economy, and citizens' contentment. And as we start undermining the US and making ourselves stronger, these will decrease, hopefully to the point that America will collapse, which will be great. Now this telephone is where you do most of the decisions based on your country, like for example statistics, in which we're going to want to raise taxes to 4% and we're going to click on autofill reserve because that's useful. And this is our current reserve, 570 million. You use your reserve to do stuff, as long as your reserve is above 400, you can send things like civil aid and subsidized countries, which is really useful. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> That's a great song. Um, yes, we see our oil trade here is um, 11, and we can in increase prices until it's 15, I think, in the early game, yes. I think in, at some point in 86, there'll be an oil crisis, which will really hurt our economy for a short while. At least until we start getting a lot more countries into Comic-Con, because the more countries we have in our economic union, the more our oil power grows. Especially once we uh, take over the Middle East, which we'll, we will definitely want to do. So the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you need to unlock them by using 100 political power. And you, you gain or lose political power depending on what you do in every turn. Um, your Ministry of Science, very important. We will basically see this is what we got. Okay, so I'm going to just show you. For going with the OGAS route, we got these two free technologies, so we are closer to OGAS now, which makes our economy stronger. Um, this is the space one, so if we took the military one, we would be going down this way. But we took the peaceful one, so we have massive spacecraft and life support. The next one is Moon Science Station. Imagine the international prestige and stuff we got if we put a moon station, you know, ahead of the US, you know, to clearly show that we're winning the space race, which would be very good for us. Um, let's see. Uh, this is agricultural, that just helps with your economy. Military, once again, this is very useful. And atom. So, the base ones cost 30, which is very cheap. So you see we start out with 450 unused ones. And we're going to want to save up until 1000, so we can research the moon base. But at the very beginning, we can just get the very basic ones, like CCTV cameras, for the very basic ones, like new research institutes. For this one, we're going to have to do final technology researching because it gives us more weapons and like upgrades it which increases the speed with which the war in Afghanistan finishes and that's important for us to finish that soon. Um, Atom, yes, will take 30 and then the rest of that we will wait and save up for the moon science station. Council of Ministers is very important because these are basically your ministers which do your things. So Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we're going to take friendship with China because it's very important to be friends with China because they can really, really help your economy. So we're going to do that. Ministry of Internal Affairs, we're going to do harsh policy that helps us with cracking down corruption, which is a major factor in your economy because if you let corruption run rampant, it will destroy your country and we obviously don't want that. Ministry of Defense, uh, we'll leave that as it is. Um, Soldiers living standard improving. Yep, that's okay. State planning committee will do people's supply focus because we don't want our people to be angry. Chairman of the Supreme Council. That's us, Grigory Romanov. Chairman of the Council of Ministers. We'll leave him with pragmatism. Ministry of Industry. We will go goods production because, once again, people. Ministry of Education. Suslov's was... There's a guy called Suslov and his methods of propaganda and education are quite good, so we'll keep that. Committee of State Security. We'll go with... We leave it as it is. Mm -mm. Yes, main intelligence intelligence director. We'll go with Brezhnev doctrine for the beginning, but later, once we are clearly have a strong economy and the West starts to decline, we're gonna want to put it fully in fighting the West because that really just further starts knocking them down, and we're gonna want to do that. But later, um, chairman of central committee. Yeah, we can't change that. Uh, of Komsomol, minister of agriculture. We're gonna go with mechanization because that helps our industry to become more modern and good. Um. Yes, let's just, um, so in the calculator you basically do your finances, what you're spending your money on. And uh, the game started with very unbalanced, and I think it represents what the Soviet Union was doing accurately. So we're gonna shake it up quite radically, so this might be a bit boring, I might have to speed this up. So I'm gonna put 60 in here, um, I'm gonna have to, um, law and order, yep, that's okay, I'm gonna do 
cultural enlightenment, we're gonna go zero to religious organizations, we're gonna do computerization, so we'll have to improve that in a second. This will do zero for all of these, we'll do 60 for this, because that's the minimum that you need for it to work fine. 80 is the minimum that you need for this to work fine, and look how much money we already have to spend for free. Um, support for the UN, this will leave as it is just for now. Uh, agriculture needs to be only at 100, so we'll leave it at that. And imports, no, Soviet men don't need imports. The imports corrupt your people and they ruin your economy in the long run, so we're not going to have any of those. And fight against corruption, now we're actually going to start spending the money that we've accrued. Um, okay, soldiers living, we're going to want it to 120, because there are two factors that... Um, uh, affect how long you can stay in power. There's the loyalty of the KGB and the loyalty of generals. They basically keep each other in check and we want both of them to be strong. So you have to invest in them to make them powerful. So soldiers living will be 120. KGB once again 120. We'll go to state mechanisms that we're going to start at 220. And look at that, we're already spending our budget. Cultural and... In, in, in uh, uh, sorry. Cultural enlightenment will be 200 because um, if it's low, then the intellectuals get upset and you have to either spend money or your people get angry, so we're going to keep it at that. Um, where's the environment? Support for ecology, we're going to do 200 immediately for the same reason. Uh, if your environment gets ruined, you basically either have to spend a lot of money or you make your industry weaker. It's, it's, it's bad, man. <laughs> so we have to keep an eye on that. And the rest of the money, we will put it into civil technology because that's very important. So we'll take one... Oh, come on. 140 for civil technology, and we'll put 70 for computerization. So hopefully in the first turns, we'll get a bit of money to hopefully balance out the beginnings. Because the beginning is very important, especially the finances. So yeah, I think that'll do it for this episode. We have a good, balanced startup episode. So yes, um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, yeah, hopefully my explanation, hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'm going to try to be, and hopefully I'm not too boring, because I'm trying to cover a lot of ground. And at the same time, I'm trying to be interesting and actually uh, explore the background and the context and the historical information. So yes, uh, like and subscribe, leave any comments or suggestions or recommendations in the comments below. And as always, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.